What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Booking Not Happy show. I'm your host, Paul. I'm here with my guy, Nate, going over eight plays for December 20th. That's uh, Wednesday, December 20th, college basketball slate. Got some good plays to cap to go over. If this is your first time here, be sure to like and subscribe so that you do not miss any of our videos. Before we jump into our plays, we are desperate, Nate, to give out some free money. If you'd like to qualify to get in the running for some free money, here's what you got to do. Number one, subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you are a subscriber. Number two, in the comments down below, type 4 and 0. Oh. Give us the good vibes that we need. If Nate or myself go 4 and 0, oh, if I go 4 and 0, oh, I'm going to cash app a random person 40 bucks. If Nate goes 4 and 0, oh, he will cash app a random person $40. That qualifies for the contest. If you're not subscribed, you're not going to qualify. If you don't comment, obviously, we won't be able to pick you either. So, Easy 40 bucks. If we win, uh, we will choose somebody. Give us the good vibes so that we can get that going. With that being said, Nate, let's jump right into our plays. I've got four for you. Nate's got four for you. And uh, here we go. We're going to start it right off. All right. My first play that I'm going to go over, Nate, is going to be one of my favorite teams this year. You know it. IPFW traveling to play Pittsburgh. Okay. IPFW currently 11 and 1 on the season. Got a really good record going, averaging about 87 points per game, shooting nearly 50% from the floor, and they're holding their opponents to only 67 points per game. Rashid Bello is their offensive leader, averaging about 15 points, four assists. Anthony Roberts is second on their team, averaging also about 15 points, and they have a good uh third lead or third score, um Jalen Jackson averaging 14.7. So basically got three kind of a three-headed monster here in, in their scoring department. Looking at Pittsburgh, on the other hand, they're the home team here. They've won eight out of their 11 games. So they also have a good record going. They just blew out their last opponent by 36 points. Uh, South Carolina State, not a very good team that they played there, but they did win and they covered. Um, offensively, you know, the uh, this is a team. Blake Henson's the leader for them, scoring twenty one point six points per game. Ishmael Leggett averages fourteen for them. You know, digging deeper into the ATS, both of these teams are pretty good against the spread. Seven and three is IPFW. Seven and four is Pittsburgh. However, IPFW is five and one on the road. Pittsburgh five and three at home. You know, there's a slight edge in effective field goal percentage for IPFW at 55.3 compared to only 54.2. IPFW also shoots it better from the three at 39.5 compared to 36.2. And the cherry on top here, Ken Palm only has this as a 12-point game. I'll take the extra point, point and a half here. Give me IPFW. You know, we watched this team early on at the beginning of the year. I like them. They beat DePaul on the road. This isn't a team that's going to be scared to play anybody, in my opinion, on the road. I don't know if they're going to win this game, but I do believe they cover. So that's going to be my first play of the day here. Give me IPFW at plus 13 and a half. Yeah, I like that play as well, um, Paul. I think um, they shoot the ball well enough to keep it in the game. Yeah, I don't think they win this game at all, but, um, you know, being 14 and a half, um, I think their guards can keep them close, <clears throat> and they don't turn the ball over very much, which leads to pit break. Uh, you know, getting in the fast break. So I think they can slow down the pace a little bit, shoot the ball well. They can definitely be within this number. Good deal, good deal. And the last thing I had on my notes here, as I said, both teams are good at covering, but IPFW covers on average by seven point seven. Pittsburgh is only covering covering on average six point two. So. IPFW has a better ATS record and also covers by a little bit more um, in general. So anyways, moving on to my next play here, Nate. I'm looking at another one of my favorite teams. This team's been a wagon. New Mexico playing UC Irvine, okay? Uh, this game is at New Mexico. Looking at UC Irvine first here, um, 
you know, they're going for their second consecutive win. The game is played, like I said, at the pit. Uh, you know, UC Irvine most recently won against South Dakota State. They blew them out 121-78 to as 15.5-point favorites. On the other hand, New Mexico just barely won against New Mexico State. They won 73-72, did not cover as 14.5-point favorites. But now they get to go back home. Irvine has played well this season. They have. They're also good against the spread. I'll dig into that later. But they've struggled on the road where they've lost three straight games. You know, they're averaging 77 and a half points per game. Um, like, as I said, they had a big scoring game their last game. Dean Killer leads them with 22 points and eight rebounds per game. Devin Tillis, their most recent game, had 16 and seven. And they've played pretty well defensively, giving up 69 points per game. However, they gave up 78 in their last one. This game's more so, though, about New Mexico. They're off to a great start this season. They're on a nine-game winning, winning streak. As I said, they just barely beat New Mexico State, but now they're going to have tons of just kind of a, uh, you know, get-right-at-home type feeling after barely squeezing by at, that, at, at you know, New Mexico State. They're averaging 80, 84.9, basically 85 points per game. And uh, they're led by JT Toppin. He had 18 and 11 in their last game. Donovan Dent, I've seen him on some draft boards. Very versatile player. Had 14 points, four rebounds, six assists, and four steals. And Jalen House added 14 and five here. So, as I said, my play is going to be New Mexico to cover this spread. They have won nine straight games, five straight games they've won at home. They're playing really well offensively. And as we talked about, even though UC Irvine's a solid team, they struggle when it comes to going on the road. All right. They've lost three. They've lost um, three of their last four games. And uh, they've struggled offensively on the road, barely able to score more than 70 points when they go on the road. They don't rebound it very well, especially compared to New Mexico. So they're just not going to get a whole lot of extra scoring opportunities this game. So all that being said, I do like New Mexico to cover here. Um, they've been they've been good in general. They've been good against the spread. And uh, I think New Mexico wins this by about 10, 12 points. What are your thoughts here, Nate? Um, I, with you, I lean New Mexico. New Mexico is going to have the two best players on the court, which is always a good thing to have. Uh, Irvine has lost their last three on the road, but they've been versus three pretty solid teams as Utah State, San Diego State, and Duquesne. Um, you know, in all those games, they were right there. They only lost to San Diego State by one yeah. and Utah State by 10. So, but I kind of like the spot here, like you said, a little get back, get right game for New Mexico, a little bounce back spot. Um, I definitely lean New Mexico here um, with you with that number. Uh, for me, it's a stay away, but I do like New Mexico that has the two best players on the court. And um, I do lean them, so um, I'm kind of with you on that one. Yeah, the pit is a tough place to play. Yes, it is. Pumped. Their home court should be rocking. I remember last year during the break, they still had a lot of fans show up and go there to their to their games. So um, I don't I don't expect it to be like most gyms where it's um, kind of empty during this time of year. Good deal. I'm going to move on to my third play. I've got one of the grossest games on the slate, and then I'll talk about one of the uh, more exciting, maybe the most exciting game coming up as my fourth play. But my third play, we're looking at Chicago State, Nate. One of my favorite teams. Favorite this teams season. this year, yeah. Minus six and a half at home versus Bethune-Cookman. I've talked about this team before. If you have not watched this team, this is not the old Chicago State that we're used to seeing. They're still not great by any means, but they beat Northwestern at Northwestern, one of the biggest upsets of the year. I watched that game, and, you know, they're not going to be just upsetting teams all day like they did there. But what is a true thing for them, a true player, a real player, is – their wing player, Wesley Cardet, I mentioned him before, former four-star. I think this guy is going to be an NBA player, averaging 19 points, almost three assists per game. Bethune-Cookman, on the other hand, they have not covered the spread as an underdog of six points or more this season. They're 0-3 in those types of situations. All right, 
Both teams force turnovers well, but, you know, the advantage here is going to be the home court for Chicago State. Chicago State has a higher effective field goal percentage, 46.5 to 44.8. And in general, you know, these teams are not very good, but Chicago State has a smaller losing margin in general, and they've played similar competition. Against the spread, you know, Chicago State 7-7. and However, they've covered their last three in a row. Meanwhile, Cookman is 3-5 and against the spread this season. And most notably, they're 1-5 and against the spread on the road, which this is a road game. So you take Chicago State. They've got momentum. They're playing at home. They have the best player in this game. This is a game that they they expect to win. They should win. And uh, I got them covering this six and a half points is my third play here, Nate. What are your thoughts? Yes, I'm actually – I was all over this game as well. Um, I love Chicago State here in the spot, as you mentioned. Bethune-Cook is not good on the road. They've lost their last three road games and did not cover – any of those games, six and a half. I think this is um, the books just aren't used to Chicago State having a player the caliber of Cardet Jr. Um, you know, last year they hung they hung in games just by playing purely strong defense, but they were getting spreads. You know, about 15, 20 each game, and they were just hanging in there with their defense in the games they were in. This year they can actually score the ball um, a little bit more dynamic on the offensive side, still good defensively. And they're on the better of the bottom. They're, I think they're the top tier of the bottom half of teams in the NCAA, if that makes sense to you. All these Bethune, Pacifics. I think Chicago is definitely on the topper, topper tier there. So when they're playing these average teams that they're playing against, especially at home, they're getting a slow number. I think this number should be closer to eight to nine, eight, nine, ten than under seven. Under seven plus under seven, you're gonna get your down six. They're gonna foul still to get to, chance to get to that seven if it's a tight game. So I definitely like Chicago State here. Give me 25 points plus for Cardet in this game here, Nate. Gonna go off. Dude's the real deal. All right, I'm going into my last play here. This is one of the biggest games on the board tomorrow. Arizona playing <laughs> Alabama. I'm on this one, too. I wonder what side we're on. You know what? I knew you were going to be on this one, Nate, so I took a point total here, okay? <laughs> this will lead right into your plays afterwards, all right? I'm not going to – I'll jump right into my, my play here, and then I'll explain why. Current number is at 173.5. It's a huge number. And I'm going to take the under here. I'm taking under 173.5. The under? Wow. Wow. Now, on the season, Alabama has gone over in eight out of ten of their games. However, Arizona has only gone over four out of nine of their games, okay? Alabama has the fourth shortest length of possession in the country, according to Ken Palm. They only take 14.2 seconds, you know, per possession to get a shot up compared to the college average of 17.1. So, that's why, obviously, this is such a huge number. The pace is expected to be extremely, extremely fast. Now, let me tell you why I'm on the under here. First of all, this is in a basically neutral game. It's it's in Phoenix. It's about a two-hour drive for Arizona. While I think Arizona will have a good amount of fans there, and I do think Arizona wins and covers, by the way, I think that there's just going to be some shooting woes for – Arizona and for Alabama here. Okay. Because I believe Arizona is going to win this game. It's going to slow down the pace of Alabama. Okay. Umar Balo, the big man for Arizona is a monster inside. It's very clear at this point when you're scouting against Alabama, you need to run them off the three point line. You know, I've talked about this before with them. You run them off the three point line. You run them into the big that you have in Balo. And you make them finish at the rim. Furthermore, because I believe Arizona is going to win, they're going to be scoring a good amount themselves. I think Arizona puts up 90, okay? But that's going to mean Alabama is going to have to really take the ball out of the net. I mean, they're going to have to take it out of bounds. Their ability to push the ball after a made basket is extremely hindered 
when when they're not, you know, just getting a rebound and running with it. So, you know, they're not going to be able to just throw it ahead, one pass, and shoot a three all the time because they got to take it out of bounds. Arizona's going to be able to get back, set their defense, and uh, slow this game down. So I've got this game somewhere around 90 to 80 in Arizona's favor, right around 170 number. Um, so that's my fourth and final play, Nate. This will lead right into your analysis if you want to talk in, at all about the number. But uh, that, that's my fourth play. Give me under 173 and a half in the Arizona-Alabama game. Take it over, Nate. Yeah, so uh, I'll just go with one my play. I have Arizona here at minus seven and a half. I love this spot coming off a loss. Mm. Um, and if you look, a lot of people are going to look at uh, – they both play Purdue – and um, Bama actually only lost to Purdue by six. Arizona lost by eight. So a lot of the common people might just say, oh, and Bama's getting seven and a half, slam Bama. But Bama's last three last two opponents are Purdue, Creighton. Now they're playing Arizona. They, they can't be up for th- those three huge games back to back to back. Arizona coming off a loss. It's not being at home, but basically a home game in Phoenix. Um I love this spot here for them. A nice little bounce back. Larson and Balo, Bama has no answer for those two. None. And Caleb Love can handle Sears um, and and score just as much as he as he does. So uh, they have that guard, that dog in them that maybe Zona didn't have in the past. In the past, a guard like Sears would tear him apart. Um, I think Love is a huge addition this year. And um, – you know, if the if Bama wants to get up and down, that's fine. Arizona loves to get up and down, and I think they're more efficient at it. So, um, as Paul said, I think this, you know, Arizona can get up into the 90 points. I I just – I love this spot for Arizona coming off the loss to Purdue and um, basically being at home versus Bama. Bama's third tough game in a row away from home. Um, I just I – lo- I, I love um, Arizona here – Getting only seven and a half, I'll take it for sure. I think they win by 10, 12, 13 points pretty easily. Yeah, I think we're on the same page. Like I said, my prediction is 90 to about 80. So uh, we're on the same page for sure on that one. Let's get it. And then I'll just jump into my next play. This is more kind of my system play that I have. Pacific on the road is an automatic you got to take the you got to take the other team. Cal Fullerton is a much better, much more athletic team. They've got the best player in Max Jones who's averaging 17 points a game. They shoot the ball better. They shoot better at the free throw line. Um at home they defend better. This is just a pure fade Pacific on the road. Um before the lines came out, I said, if it's anything under 16, I'll take it. It's only 14 and a Let's half be honest, right now. You're taking this thing no matter what the spread was. Well, I liked it 16 and under, but you're correct. If it was, I'm going to have a little bit more on it now. That's, if it was over 16, I maybe would have lowered my unit size on the game. But, um, you know, this being under 15 points, they got Pacific barely beat a school, a D2 school by 22 they scored 68 points for some they're not very good at all they should have lost to missouri valley at home this year um versus uc davis they were up 14 to start the game they lost by 21 if they're ever up in this game the live bet fullerton they're just not a very good team at fresno lost by by 33 at idaho lost by 30 at Northern Arizona, lost by 20. They're just – this is an automatic fade. Those are not great teams, and they're beating them consistently by 20, 30 points. Again, Mississippi Valley State at home. They went to overtime. Should have lost that game. Maybe the worst team in the country. So, I'm this is, you got to take forwards in here. We talked about this earlier. How embarrassed is Cal at this point? Is Cal, yes. The loss of this Lose team. Lose to them at home. But, but that, I think – Put the stink on the books for them for a couple games. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe we for got a while. some low numbers on Pacific after that game. One in eleven against the spread is Pacific. One of the worst, if not the worst, in the country in against the spread. Maybe in general, losing on average against the spread by almost thirteen points 
So they're not even close. No. They're not only just winning, but not even covering in these games. Their one and, cover uh, is the Cal game. Yeah, I know. They haven't covered since the first game of the <laughs> season. But, you know, I, we, we've been fading this team for years now. Leonard Perry, current head coach, it's time for him to get fired. I, no, I, know, I love it. Keep it. I, it's free money. It's I free know money. him personally. Not a big fan of him. And uh, treats his players and staff really badly. And uh, it's time for Karma to kind of get this team. And they've been getting them pretty good here this year. And they've been on an auto fade for Nate and I. And uh, let's keep it going. It's been pretty money. That's all I can say. I live bet UC Davis like three times. Printing money it. when they were when they were down fifteen. I took them all like so much. One by twenty one. Easiest bet. If they're if Pacific's ever in the game, second half to the other team always. I love it. All right, what do you got next? So then, uh, the, the, my third play that. here is a uh, Creighton at home versus Villanova minus seven and a half. Villanova has not won a true road game this year. True road game in conference, always tough, especially early in the season. I th- Creighton's two losses are when um, – in Cre- sorry, in Creighton's two losses, one it's versus UNLV and um, – Colorado State. And Colorado State, Trey Alexander sh- shot a combined three for f- 35. He is that's those are in his two losses. This being at home, I don't think Villanova does not have the team to slow down Creighton's shooting. They don't have a big to contend with with Co- Cochran. Um, I think this is a game where Creighton kind of gets right. They did beat Alabama at home by three. Alabama is a much tougher team in my opinion than than Villanova is. Um, you know, Alabama has got better guards. They're more um, athletic, more dynamic on the offensive end. If Villanova wants to stay in this game, that in my opinion, the game's gonna have to be low scoring. So if you do like Villanova, you might as well. I would take the. I think the unders are safer bet than than um, Villanova itself. But I do like Creighton here. Kind of a get right game. I think they match up well with Villanova across the board, um, and I think they just kind of. You know, five-point game, six-point game, all game, and then they take it down the last five minutes and kind of take over. Uh, I think they take this game, win this game, you know, nine nine to 12 at home and uh, pretty easily. Yeah, I think you might be able to convince me to bet this. When I first saw it, I was going to stay away. But you bring up a good point. The kid that shoots it bad, both those games were on a neutral floor. You know, both these teams have been pretty hard to cap, in my opinion, especially Villanova. They've got some really good ones. They've got some really bad losses. You know, they've got 10 days of rest here, which, you know, they could be rusty or they could be well-prepared. But, you know, Villanova relies a ton on Eric Dixon. He's the big lefty inside. And going against, matches for him. Yeah, going against Cole Brenner, the 7'4 monster in there, I don't see him. And Cole Brenner can move pretty well, too. You know, I think he can get on the perimeter. He can – contest his shot out there Dixon's not going to be able to just bulldoze him inside like he can other players you know what I mean exactly so uh I I you'll probably get me to bet this game here I'm going to wait a little longer and see if I can get a little better number here but uh I'm with you on that play Nate I think it's a good good angle you got going and then my fourth and final play is um UConn at Seton Hall I like UConn here minus I have, my book shows eight and a half right now. I like uh, UConn here minus eight and a half. And all of UConn's wins this year, they've won by ten or more points. I think UConn wins here. UConn's been tested this year away from home already, so they'll be used to being in a hostile environment. I mean, they just played Gonzaga in not Spokane, but in Seattle, Washington, which is just right down the road there. Um, They've won, like I said, every game UConn's won has been by 10, 10 or more points. Um, UConn's got the better player at every position here. You know, Seton Hall's in the middle of the Big East. I just don't think, you know, who's going to stop Tristan Newton? I just I, – I don't see it happening. Um, UConn's bigs are active, athletic. I, I just don't see, you know, Caravan – um, and Spencer, 
Spencer's having a great year this year. Him and Newton, you know, they're, they're might be the best guard duo in the country. Um, so I like – and Castle's coming back for UConn, getting his legs underneath them as well. Um, I just – I don't think Seton Hall has enough firepower. UConn's been tested away from home this year already. And like I said, every win they've had this year has been 10 or more. So um, we're getting the number at eight and a half. I, I like that. Yeah, you know, to your point, <clears throat> four and one against the spread is UConn on the road. Very good. And, uh, you know, this is their first first game of conference, right? They're going to be uh, – uh, Yeah, first first road conference game. I think they're going to be uh, pretty juiced, you know, to get this one going. And so I think this is a good play here as well. UConn, it's, you know – It's always you, tough your first road conference, but – as I said, UConn's gone to Kansas, gone to Seattle to play Gonzaga. And they've played away from home versus tougher opponents. And you know, but what I've found too with these teams uh, that lose, I just was watching Marquette lose on you know on the road as a ranked team. But the teams that are ranked and they lose on the road, they seem to just rely so much on the perimeter game, and uh, UConn doesn't. <clears throat> UConn doesn't need to. You know, they have – Newton is their best player. He's averaging 16, 7, and 6. But the big kid, Kling, what's his name? Klingon? Donovan yeah. Klingon? 7-2. Yeah, he's, nice. he's getting draft – you know, he's getting draft uh, looks by the NBA. Um, he's he's really good inside. And so they can score it several different ways, you know, and that's what I think. Well, they've got multiple do. people who can create shots for themselves. You've got yeah. Newton who can create a shot for him and others. Spencer, lights out, shooter, mid-range, free throw, three-pointer. Um, Caravan. Caravan as well. Shooter. And like I said, um, Castle's getting his legs back. These numbers aren't great, but he's he's coming off injuries. Um, you know, he's working his way back. Once he gets going, he's that's another person off the bench that's – that's good for them. Um, balls, ball can shoot a little bit as well. And, you know, they just, they're very versatile guards. Like um, if, the one thing I like about UConn, if Newton's not playing well, like a lot of teams when their best player doesn't play well, they really don't have a chance. If Newton doesn't play well, they can still win by 15. Yeah. You know, they have multiple ways to win. They can slow it down, tough you up. If you want to run, they can run with the best of them. Um, so I definitely, like I said, UConn's won every game by 10 or more. I think they cover this pretty good, pretty easily as well. You know, not when I say easily, I think they win by 10 plus as well. Could be close down the stretch, but they'll push it to 10 late. I'm with you on that. All right. Any other games, Nate? Is that it for your slate? That's my four games. I did. I was kind of looking at this one. Initially, I was going to, I was going to bet Oklahoma. I was wondering what your thoughts on the North Carolina game. It's, Technically not a home game for North Carolina, but it's in Charlotte. Um, you know, North Carolina's favored uh, by two and a half. Yeah, I lean Oklahoma there to at least cover the spread. I think it's going to be a close game. Haven't been a big fan of uh, North Carolina from what I've seen of them this year. That's what I was thinking too, but if you look, they've got some great wins this year as well. They beat, they, um, you know, they beat Tennessee. They put up 100 against Tennessee. They beat Arkansas. Um, what about this Baylor Duke game? Uh, that, that's another one I kind of stayed away. I, I was leaning Baylor. I like Baylor coming off the lot, like blowout loss, but um, well, I can't get a feel for this Duke game. Uh, this Duke Duke team so far early in the season, kind of up and down. What yeah, I like Baylor here as well. This is a neutral side game. You know, Duke's favored by two and a half. Um, they had an injury problem. Do you know if that's still a thing here? I'm checking for Duke. Baylor for Duke. No, Proctor, he's questionable. He's one of their best players. He's missed well, the last Proctor game. might be out, and he, they're and they're favored. That seems fishy to me. Yeah, it says if Proctor's out. If Proctor's out and they're favored, I might lean Duke then. I didn't know Proctor was out. You're gonna lean Duke even if Proctor's out? It makes it more fishy to me. It's more yeah, of a just a Fishy line, like why would Duke still be favored with Proctor out? I I I'd like Baylor here. I think they're going to have revenge I mean? on their their mind after getting blown out by Michigan State. I mean, they did get the brakes beat off of them by Michigan State. Michigan State shot the best of their entire careers that game. By the way, 
All right, we've got a few more minutes, Nate. Is there any other games? I'm kind of scrolling through right now. Those um, this game, ones. this game might not be on a lot of people's radar, but um, I was looking at the Santa Clara game, and I kind of like San Jose State hmm. at home here, but it's kind of. Mine has Santa Clara as minus one and a half. Yeah, I don't have any other games to really talk about. So we're running out of time. I'm going to close it up, Nate. Um, if this yeah. is, again, your first time here, be sure to subscribe. And we are begging to give away some money, guys. All Let's right. Go 8-0. Everyone make money plus two people get some money. Let's go 8 no. Put 4 no down in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And if Nate or myself or both of us go 4 0, we're picking a random person that qualifies and we will cash app you 40 bucks. We will announce the winner the next day. All right. And uh, let's make some money. Yeah, let's Our go motto, out there. Let's, let's have a good day. Let's make some money. Our motto here is to make your bookie not happy. That's our goal. We're off to a great start in college basketball. Let's keep it going. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we will see you on the next video.